I want to share with you an awesome SaaS story of $400 a month to $188,000 a month in just three years. So this is a story of Plausible. It's an analytics platform that is easy to use and a privacy friendly alternative to Google Analytics. It's intuitive, lightweight, and an open source web analytics, no cookies, fully compliant with GDPR, CCPA, and PECR. It was made and hosted in the EU and it's powered by European Ode Cloud infrastructure. Overall, it's really positioned itself as an alternative to Google Analytics as they claim that it's frustrating, difficult to understand, and slow to load as well as privacy invasive. So plausible analytics is a good alternative as it's simple but powerful, lightweight, and open source. They have over 10,000 paying subscribers. So let's dive into the story here. So Marco Sark and Yuki built their privacy-friendly analytics platform from 400 to 188,000 a month in just three years. They had no investments and no slimy marketing tactics. And so they started with the build in public approach. This included posting what he was up to on Twitter and the hackers and the blog, what feature he was building, the thinking behind it, feature announcements, and the feedback gathering. And so Marco joined a bit over a year into that. And they continued the public approach, but added some content marketing into the mix too. This included a lot of content with educational, informational, and opinionated angles focusing on the world of web analytics, online privacy, and bootstrap startups. And so they really had traction from the beginning here. And this graph probably is a little skewed by how high their MR is now. We can see a small bump here in the first year. I'm going to say that's between five and 10,000. Then you have just shy of 40 in 2021. In 2022, you have just shy of 100. Now in 2023, you have 180,000. In terms of the growth, they never did any paid advertising. They don't have an affiliate program. They don't pay anyone to recommend them. They don't have a mailing list. They don't do any sales calls. They wanted to grow without supporting surveillance capitalism, which does make sense given the overall mission of the product. So some people say they're growing too slow and they're leaving money on the table, but they are okay with that as they don't want to sacrifice their principles here or the happiness to be the next unicorn. As those principles are core to their branding and they're a big reason to why customers choose this product specifically. So in terms of the content they post, their headlines are happenings that their potential audience cares about. They didn't just repeat it either, they added information with their own spin on it to give a personal point of view. And for them as well, Google Analytics is a competitor, so there's always something to talk about and to compare and contrast with. You really tried to make these posts informational and educational, and then they would take these posts and put them in relevant communities and niche sites in order to drive interest. They weren't just posting on their website and hoping for the best and hoping for rankings from Google. In terms of the growth, luck and timing had a big part to play. They're riding the privacy wave, which is increasing in popularity. And they're in a huge market with big players that have made bad decisions. So new privacy regulations have also opened the doors for the new ways of doing analytics. In terms of the growth, it's all about consistency. It might seem easy and quick from the outside, but the two co-founders here have spent countless hours writing code and writing work. They've been taking small steps consistently day after day for several years with all that time and effort, including tiny wins along the way, make a difference. There's no server bullet. It's just consistent applied effort. In terms of maintaining their growth, they're just going to stick with their current strategy as it's working extremely well. It's one of those things where if something is working well, you want to repeat it and dive into it rather than trying to experiment with a bunch of new different things as there is still so much to gain from their current approach. In terms of the product, they wanted to make it solid, fast, and easy to use as well as stable and they regularly improve it according to feedback which helps make people happy. One of their main rules is to never over promise and under deliver. They also make rarely big breaking changes to how the product works on the dashboard on the surface level, it's pretty close in terms of look and feel to how it was three years ago. In terms of the business model, it's a typical SaaS startup model where they're going to offer a subscription and people are going to pay for the service. The way it differentiates itself though is that they are an open source SaaS startup too. And that's mainly for the sake of trust and transparency, but they've decided to make it so you can download their code and run it on your own server. So you can run Plausible completely yourself for free, but you're not going to get the support. And you're not going to get the support for further development of the product either. So if you're running it for free yourself, you would also need to do all the work managing an analytics infrastructure. So a lot of you will do just end up paying for the service. It's because a lot of people would rather just do that and then focus on running their business and whatever they're passionate about instead of being focused on managing the uptime and backups of their web analytics server infrastructure. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm sure you want to build your own micro SaaS. There's a link in the description below where you get sneaky micro SaaS ideals you can steal for free. All you have to do is enter in your email address. So again, free micro SaaS ideas in the link in the description below. All you need to do is enter in your email.
So definitely unique there to have an open source, but then charge for it on top. But overall, it seems to be working extremely well. So definitely a super cool story on how they went from 400 to $188,000 a month in MRR. It was consistent and applied effort. And they found out what works and they worked at it consistently, as well as making a really good product and riding a wave of privacy. Let me know what you think of this story here. I'll leave a link to the Indie Hackers link below. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it so much if you smash that like and subscribe button below. If you have any questions, leave a comment. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.